Welcome to a very different episode of Figuring Out. Today, we have gotten champion bike racers on our podcast. We've tried to understand how biking as a culture is growing. What does it take to become a professional bike racer? How much money can you make? What are the challenges that you face? How dangerous this whole sport is? Is it even a sport? or it's just for fun and impressing other people we've covered all these things and try to understand what are the economics which run behind managing a large bike racing team enjoy today's show because it's very different than what we do we try to experiment by getting someone from a very different career i hope you'll enjoy it before you actually start the show please subscribe to rachamani clips and rachamani shorts channel because there we put out the huge podcast into smaller clips and you get to see the clips unfiltered behind the scenes which you don't get to see it in this podcast enjoy the show all right Lucio and Rajni welcome to figuring out Thank you it's my pleasure to host this conversation because this is a very different conversation with very different type of type of guests that we do and i'm super excited because i love i wouldn't call it alternative career but mm-hmm. i want to call it like i love people who make passion their life okay it's an underrated skill it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of uh, path breaking moves and decisions in their life and it's like an unconventional journey which not a lot of people can pursue so that's why it makes it a special episode for me and in a lot of movies they show around the world it's not just indian movies around the world right mm-hmm. you usually the actor the main lead actor or the hero of the movie is shown riding a bike very fast and impressing the girl right because it's like someone like who's you mean like tom cruise in mission impossible yeah, yeah. like in the motorcycle yeah. 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 if you if you dri- if you ride fast then you can impress a girl have you ever done that have you any one of you has impressed a girl because through your biking I, I have done yes. you've done that <laughs> <laughs> see that cult that see uh, normally the youngsters like bike the especially who's riding the bike like under person the girl is liking also no see that culture is everywhere there yeah. but in the india i think very less but i think this country like a <laughs> <10 gay laughs> <around. laughs> before i start i want both of you to do a little thing that we do so tell us or tell all our audience okay in 1 minute or 2 minutes what do you do and what do you do how is it relevant for everyone right now who's listening to us yeah. why not you go first yep the you talk about the for the my uh, how i started for the racing career see the basically uh, uh, i am born and bred chennai uh, tamil nadu yeah. uh, so my age of uh, 16 i started the uh, riding uh, my brother scooter hmm uh, so mostly i like uh, more uh, speed okay then uh, i started work my age of uh, 17 uh, because my father died uh, my age of 14 i don't have big support my uh, my my home i started work then i very crazy about the bikes okay about the speed then uh, whatever i earning some money i bought the rx100 at 17 um i think uh, 2000 uh, 2000 exactly 2000 i bought uh, how old were you that that time i am almost uh, 20 okay age of 20 uh, i bought the new bike then uh, i finding the how to go for the racing because uh, the normally uh, maybe 2000 you don't have uh, any google uh, no facebook no instagram no the phone also not much okay yeah. then searching with a uh, normally the how uh, started for the racing the normally bike will ride very fast in the road then uh, started slowly uh, finding the where the race up happening okay even i am bought in uh, tamil nadu and chennai but uh, first in indian race track in chennai only but i don't know okay. because no big coverage nothing and for the our motorsports 
then slowly i find one uh, uh friend uh, he uh, like a is a technician is a technician for the two wheeler then uh, he is a racer also then he uh, i f- find the uh, one one other with my friend then i when i saw that uh, guy i i ask one question i want to race then he took a race track okay i saw the the that time exactly i went uh, seeing the track that time i have uh, some national championship some race then i decided i want to start my career in air only and when did you think that what was the point what age you believed that okay now racing can take care of me and my family uh maybe you can say like a 2001 2002 so nothing and no social media at all hmm. the people does no awareness for the racing at all the very odd because you no know, I, i i whatever money i am i will put for racing only till uh, my age of uh, 21 i started my racing till i think the uh, age of uh, 28 or almost 29 okay I, i i i only whatever the aim price money some salary i'll put my uh, out to go more faster and uh, doing more frat is uh, maybe some some other races maybe other country to go race everything you need to spend without funds uh, that is very difficult but in aiming money and earning money and this sports in india very difficult now maybe the culture is changing moto gp coming here in india maybe other it will take 5 to 10 years to to, to aiming money okay so it took you 8 to 10 years to start making money in this yes yes wow all right what about you how did you start your journey tell us about yourself where were you born what did you do i born uh, born in uh, venice in italy mm-hmm. wonderful city but um, i grew up in bologna okay. uh, bologna is a is a city uh, in a uh, center north of italy where there is a uh, a lot of culture for motorsports because uh, is uh, nearby bologna there is uh, the company ferrari there is the company lamborghini there is the company ducati yeah so um, let's say speed i grow in uh, an environment where uh, the speed uh, was uh, was part of uh, of the dna of many people um i would like to say something that uh, i truly believe that uh, the spirit of man was always to go higher deeper and faster and uh, this is a sentence that i i, I read uh, on a, on a book and uh, i truly believe that this is it you know and uh, about myself yes i always wanted to to go faster since i was uh, as was a child i had a bicycle and want to go faster i had a moped and uh, i wanted that my moped uh, been faster than every other mopeds i had a motorcycle and then the motorcycle wanted the the, the 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 motorcycle could go faster than everybody else but then i realized that, that um, it was uh, of course uh, not a proper things to do going faster on the street then uh, i started to be interested uh, in go faster on a race track which is a much much safer environment and a proper environment to 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 please myself so i started to go uh first in uh, off road so with motocross because i couldn't afford to go on the race track because uh, it was more uh, more expensive I didn't have the money so I asked my my parents can you buy a, a motorcycle for me to go to go racing but they said no 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 it's impossible it's impossible you cannot uh, buy a motorcycle for for go racing we don't want you go racing and uh, I can understand now uh, I can understand that parents are concerned about uh, their own child going you know racing but um I I had this passion and I I really wanted to satisfy my passion so I started to to work uh, on uh, I I went to the school I started to work in the summer time I also work uh, after school uh, doing mechanic I earn uh, some money and I could uh, buy my motorcycle a motorcycle 
a street motorcycle that eventually modified you could go racing. Unfortunately, I didn't have the money to buy all the gears and all the stuff. Then uh, I, I had an idea. I, I knew that my girlfriend wanted to buy also a motorcycle. So I spoke with the father of my girlfriend and then they, and they, he, he, I said, uh, do you want to buy my motorcycle for your uh, daughter? And uh, he was thinking about it and then he said, yes. So I sold the motorcycle to my girlfriend and with this money I could uh, buy the racing gear, I could uh, effort to buy the tire and some spare parts uh, to go racing, to make my first race ever. Of course, I didn't have any more the motorbike, but my girlfriend could borrow me my motorbike. So basically I sold the motorbike, <laughs> bought the stuff and then asked the, <laughs> my girlfriend to borrow me the motorbike back. So. <laughs> That's, Good plan. <laughs> that was my, let's say, financial, uh, my first financial deal. <laughs> yes. And uh, actually, 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 I went race. I, I, I did my first race ever in uh, Misano race track uh, in Italy. And uh, yeah, the, the, the race was, were, were, were okay because uh, I was uh, on the leading group. And then in the last lap, I was a second. And uh, unfortunately, trying to pass the first, uh, I, I, I crash against him and uh, we, we, we both crash. But uh, I, after that race, I understood that uh, I could uh, make uh, some racing career. So I, I was lucky because, uh, as I told you, in uh, my area in Bologna, there was a lot of uh, culture for motorsport and uh, Yes, a moto club um, took care about me in a very nice way. They started to finance me a little bit. So I was working, I got a little bit money from the moto club, I got a little bit money from, uh, uh, from um, some uh, small uh, uh, company who started to sponsor me. It was difficult at the beginning because uh, yes, it's a very expensive sport, but um, step by step, uh, I could uh, build up uh, my racing career. I did uh, my, sec my second year, I did the second in the Italian championship. Then I did the second in the, world, in the Europe European championship. And then I, I won the European championship. And then I moved to the world championship. I did 15 years of racing in the World Championship. Sorry, 10 years of racing in the World Championship, 15 years in total. In 2003, I stopped racing, but I already had my own team and I keep going with my team as a team manager. And this is where I'm now, team manager of LCR on the MotoGP team, which is the, let's say, the, the, the team, uh, uh, satellite team uh, of uh, on the racing connected in the MotoGP class, which is the Formula One of, of, uh, of racing. And you both keep saying that uh, sports is, this sport is very expensive, yeah. right? How expensive it is. Like, let's say if I want to become a bike racer, I want to get into it. How much do I need to pay yearly? And on what all things? Like start by breaking down where all do you spend? To start at the very beginning, very, very beginning with uh, um, what we call a sport production means uh, uh, production bikes sold on the shops, mm -hmm. but modified and, and eventually go racing. It need uh, a minimum uh, like, uh, I would say, uh, 30,000 euro in a, in a year. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. Okay. And 30,000 euros is just on the bike or? No, no, no. Bike. And uh, and also the money to go to the to the race meetings uh, to buy some spare parts uh, to um, to buy the the racing gear. This is just the minimum budget you need uh, to just to start. Then uh, our team operation uh, in MotoGP is is is, is huge. That is huge. huge. <laughs> okay, what is that? Um, as a over 50 million euro. 50 million euro is, yes. what is this expense? Um, we have, um, first of all, uh, we have uh, the bikes, the bikes themselves, 
cost about uh, 5 million euro. How many the, bikes are there? Four is... bikes, two bikes per riders. Yeah, yes, we have two, two riders. Okay. Then we have uh, we have also the, the all the all the technical part like carbon brakes, uh, like special uh, fuel, and then uh, we have uh, uh, the 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 rider salary. We have uh, we are fifty two people working in the in the team for two people for, for two, two riders. Two. Okay, how much is the rider salary? Depend. Uh, depend uh, of course uh, in like in any in any sport the rider salary can go from uh, 300,000 up to 20 million per year per year yes so that's a so per one team costs around 15 million euros a year approximately a uh, private team yes like my team supported by honda and all the sponsor and so on and also we got uh, also uh, money from uh, the tv rights of mm-hmm. course as you know is a sport that is worldwide uh, shown on uh, on tv channels and then uh, we we got also a couple of million uh, of euro on uh, on uh, tv rights uh, refunds and um Yes, that's that's very 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 expensive. But it's like in Formula One, you know, Formula One is even ten times ten times higher costs. So, of course, uh, you need it. You you do it for passion, not for money. Honestly, of, uh, and it looks uh, impressive figures. Yes, but uh, like in every field in our life, there are steps. You know, so the most important for me is that the. someone who has a dream to become a motorcycle racer i think that they should uh, keep uh, their dream alive and then uh, try his best to contact people like uh, rajni and and uh, let's say go forward got it how tell me how it is different in india do you think the money which you need per year is almost same or it's different no See the, how much money do I need to the, become a rider? The cost of uh, India racing, maybe you can say per year. You want starting like a, like a beginner, okay? Starting, maybe you, you need uh, bikes, maybe racing gears, some practice mm-hmm. and racing, and preparing the bikes. Yeah. You know the tires, spare maybe spare parts, everything. You, you can need enough five lakh every year. You need five lakhs. That is starting stage. Okay. Five lakh. Yeah. How much money it is? Is approximately um, so around in dollars. It would be like seven thousand dollars or something like that. But you rent a bike in that year, in that way. You yeah, I can bike. rent the bike. Yeah, yeah. That is a like a protection bike. Okay. Yeah. The the that is the cheaper cost to starting for the racing in India. Yeah. Got okay. it. Okay. Then there are a lot of step. No, next level, next yeah. level. That is going to up. Okay. Like the culture of India. See that five lakh the huge, okay. Uh, you know yeah, that yeah, yeah, cost, it's, okay. It's, it's big money, and especially for the no returns. Yeah, yeah, because the culture of like uh, Italy and uh, maybe Spanish, their racing is yeah. very big, because like yeah. uh, like uh, the you can you see the salaries for the sal riders, okay. Yes, so I don't get any salary without uh, any sponsoring team, okay. Maybe I ride TVS some five years. That time I got the salary. That mm. also almost twelve thousand rupees my salary month. Wow! Yeah. Okay, both of you are, you know, your your team principals in the Castrol Power One India's Ultimate Moto Star. Yeah. Tell me exactly step by step, what is your job in this? What do you do? And tell us how planned this event is and how unplanned this event is. Because what do I mean by unplanned and planned is what goes into the race? Yeah. Do you think like everything is, uh, you take precautionary measures and then everything's planned so that it's safe, or do you think there's some level of adrenaline and there's some level of adventure as well? If uh, Rajni allow me to answer, I would like to say that uh, it's a very commendable project. Yeah. That Castro Power One Ultimate uh, uh, Motor Star. Motor Star. 
have uh, settled up because uh, we were talking at the beginning of this uh, conversation about uh, the cost of racing. Mm. So, and the difficult, and then also Rajini and myself co- talked about the difficulty to have a sponsor at, at the beginning to find the money. So, in that case, Castrol Power One Ultimate Motorstar project, it's there to help and support the young generation, the young the young people who really uh, want and deserve an opportunity to go to become a racer. And that's fantastic because uh, they will be, uh, let's say, they will guide you and uh, they will support you. And uh, ourselves, Rajini and myself, we are going to occupy two different uh, positions in that project. Rajini, it will uh, occup- it will be fundamental to work on a pre-selection of uh, the ra- ra- racer skill, and he will uh, uh, pick up the best uh, group of uh, talented uh, uh, r- future racer. And uh, myself w- will be more the figure that uh, we will uh, invite in Europe to train with our MotoGP riders and to understand about the racing culture and perhaps to give an opportunity to have a couple of races in Europe uh, at the international level, the best uh, rider that will be selected by Rajni. So uh, we are going to work on uh, on two different uh, scale. Rajni here in India and thanks to his uh, pre-selection job, I'm going to uh, let uh, the best selected rider test with our MotoGP rider, training with us, uh, using our facility, and, and then uh, uh, race uh, in, at the international level uh, in Europe uh, as a, in the smaller category. And uh, eventually, if they will have uh, the chance, they, we will uh, put them in a, a racing academy in Europe. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, tell me, how much money can somebody make in this career? Do you think <laughs> it's it's good for making money? Well, um, again, uh, I think that uh, somebody who wants to become a motorcycle racer he shouldn't become a motorcycle racer because uh, of making money. He should no, no, become I'm not a motorcycle that. racer because of the passion, passion and love. No, so I get that. What I'm yeah. trying to ask is, let's say I have passion. Yeah. Okay. But I also have my bills to be taken care of. Yeah. I also have my family. Yeah. If I start doing this, is there a possibility one year, two year, five year, ten years? At one point, I start making money. Or um, do you think it's a zero one game? Only few people will make money. Everyone else first, won't make money. I would like to say that uh, this is a um, sport uh, that uh, probably in the first uh, four or five years, like it happened also to me, uh, I I couldn't make money. Mm-hmm. I I had to work uh, as a mechanic uh, on a motorcycle shop. Uh, to to have my own salary. Then, uh, thanks to the sportive results, uh, of course, you got. Uh, I got uh, prize race prizes and uh, and also got uh, first sponsors. That was uh, like uh, motorcycle parts producers and so on. Um, at the beginning, uh, uh, if you if you race at the national level, it's very difficult to make money. Uh, I would say national level. Uh, maybe you can uh, you can have a you can have a, a medium average salary. Um, if you start to race at the international level, especially in the world championship, then uh, you can make uh, you can make money even uh, in the smaller categories. You you can make uh, hundred thousand euro or something like this is possible. Got it. Got it. Okay, let's let's talk about how dangerous it is. <laughs> <laughs> so very dangerous. We can call uh, uh, like uh, the safety ways hundred percent there of safety when you're riding the racetrack. Hmm. Okay, injury ways you cannot uh, make a safety <laughs> because you no, know, there are different crashes. 
Sometime you crash like a 300 km per hour. You got nothing injury. Maybe you crash very slow. Sometime the injury. You broken the ham. You broken the shoulder like that. Okay. So different sort of crash. But everything like a very safety manner. Okay. There are ambulance. There are muscles. There are a lot of things inside there. But hundred percent this risky sports. That is you know when you coming to bike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That is risky is there when you got. like a scared about crash you need to retire your racing career and stop and do it uh, maybe some management for the racing that is better way <laughs> <laughs> got it because when he entered uh, he had a shoulder band on because yeah. he recently broke his collarbone and i was asking him that uh, like are you okay it's all right he just said oh this is fine This is like almost every month for us, and I'm like, what? <laughs> it's well, like <laughs> it's like this is nothing. This is just every, like every month a broken bone is too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. No, what I meant is it like it's I a regular thing. Twenty three fractures yeah. in my racing career. Twenty three means uh, means uh, one a year. <laughs> many times uh, <laughs> more more than one a year. More than one a year. Okay, I have, I have an interesting question for you. Yeah. Why do you think this sport? as if now is not accepted in india the way let's say a cricket or a kabaddi or something else has been accepted so obviously cricket let's just keep that aside because yeah. it's part of the culture but like there are new sports coming up right there's volleyball now in yeah uh, like in new leagues they are coming up people have started watching table tennis people have started watching uh, you know kabaddi why do you feel like this is not the sport which a lot of people have started seeing at scale or do you see this changes coming and now people have started accepting yeah especially the in even all the sports in india okay the especially you can make a like a simple like a cricket okay like a 2020 happening okay why is giving minimum 2 month before shout out all the tv radio the everything because this popular in india Hmm. Okay, you know the cricket is happening. Yeah, but why is doing had everywhere and giving for the every half an hour before I'm saying before two three month. Remainder all the people again the match is happening. Yeah. Okay. Like the same thing, our sports maybe my sports. Okay, no coverage, no live coverage. nothing else you think in india there are lot of people like bike he like the bike racing but 100% doesn't know where is a racing happening because of lagging about coverage mm. media coverage you need who's doing a organizer for the our indian national championship he need to make a good coverage like live tv maybe more shout out maybe giving some mad then only we can reach the people otherwise you know the today is very fast will every people know running so own way mm. okay you want to know where is happening this event so i'm asking one simple question you okay you know where is happening in racing in india that is a thing But you know, hundred percent, where is the cricket is happening? Which countries now India is going? Because why? Either there are the club, the club is doing very smart way, because no, he's making more in connecting with the TV, so giving had continuously. He make a own TV for the cricket, like that. Okay, tell me, what's the team? which goes on behind in making one riders race possible like who all are the important people who all are the like how many people are there like how big is the team behind one rider in one race of course if we talk at the top level like moto gp no. level okay uh we are uh, like uh, i said we are uh, about uh, 50 people because we are uh, uh, 50 people for one rider no for two riders two riders for two riders because we are an enterprise Okay. Imagine that we have uh, 
uh, more than 20 ra race, races per year uh, around uh, the world. We race, uh, of course, in Europe, in America, in South America, in Australia, in Japan, in Asia. Uh, we, we have races uh, uh, here in India, in uh, Indonesia, Thailand, Japan, Malaysia, Australia, and, uh, and um, it's something that um, to, to operate a such uh, championship, you need, uh, uh, you need the mechanics. So okay. we are about uh, uh, 10 mechanics per, 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 uh, per rider. Okay, so it's like 20 mechanics. 20 mechanics. In one team. So out of 50 people, 20 are mechanics. 20 are mechanics. Okay. Then there are, um, uh, the, there are uh, uh, what we call hospitality, because uh, we have a kind of uh, hospitality unit to host, to host all the sponsored guests. Okay. Okay. And then there are all the 12 people working in the hospitality. It's a kind of a big, big uh, restaurant facility <laughs> that uh, travel around the world, you know. Then we, uh, we do have um, also uh, people who work in the communication and marketing department. How many? Uh, we do, we are uh, communication marketing five. <laughs> okay. Which include social media, which include the pro pro content production, pr producers, and so on. Then also we do have um, other uh, people who work in the logistics and the administrations, accountant, we have the other, uh, other six people, uh, and the workshop maintenance, uh, and then the um, truck drivers. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah. it's a huge operation, <laughs> huge operation, yeah. Okay, so there are riders, there are mechanics, the hospitality team, there are marketing communication people, the logistics people, the truck drivers. And the team manager. And the team manager. <laughs> 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 who do you, who has paid the highest? Riders? Of course, riders. And after riders, who are the second most? The paid? crew chief. The crew chief is means the, the technical director of the team. Technical okay. director. What does our technical director do? Uh, around 100,000 uh, euro, yeah, a little bit more. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so I want to know this. Now let's talk about your moment in your biking and racing careers, right? What was the first time that you crashed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you crashed <laughs> and you felt, okay, this is maybe, and I want to talk about a crash where you felt like maybe I should leave this. This is threatening this is life taking or this is something like that like you know we all have these kind of moments near death moments in our careers see uh, even uh, two weeks back also i had a crash <laughs> <laughs> big crash see uh, the f the the crash you know uh, that is normal for the racing and uh, first of all i will look always uh, the my once crash i look my bike how mm. expensive to prepare again? <laughs> 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 because that, that is important. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> Maybe I broke, okay. You can kneel, no problem. But the expensive, the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, the first crash ever was in my first race ever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As I told you, you know, I was the second and I was trying to pass the first and then I, I hit him. And then we cra we both crash. And uh, the crash who make me thinking about uh, what I'm doing, probably it was uh, my last crash. My last crash when I decided to, to stop my career. What happened, tell me. Um, we, I, I was leading the world championship. Okay. Uh, then uh, oh. it was in uh, June two thousand three. I won in uh, in France. I won in Spain. I won in Italy, and uh, then in July it started a 
a series of 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 uh, negative uh, results. I had uh, engine failures. I have um, suspension failure. I had a crash. I had a crash. I had a crash. I had a crash. So in that moment in Portugal, two thousand three, I said, okay. It's a kind of uh, signs that probably God is giving to me, because uh, from leading the world championship, and in couple of months, negative, negative, crash, 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 failure, failure, a crash. I said, okay, God is sending me some signal, and then perhaps is the moment that I need to stop. Then uh, this was a uh, beginning of September. And then uh, end of October uh, and uh, early November, I did uh, I did my last race. And then I decided to stop, and I decided to continue to support uh, young riders that eventually was uh, were faster. And uh, from there, I started the second journey of my racing uh, career as right. a team manager. Right. So that you had your near death experience, and then you started the second inning. Okay, tell me who is your favorite racer in the world? Valentino. Valentino, same for yeah. you. Same for you, or is there someone else? Um, I beat Valentino. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> nice. I, uh, of course, uh, I, I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, this is not a joke. I I was uh, racing in the European Championship. He, I was already an experienced rider. He just uh, was a beginner. He was just debut in the European Championship. He won the European Championship. He arrived third, so I beat him. But uh, joking apart, Valentino is—I uh, uh, mean, was uh, and still is uh, probably the the, the most uh, biggest hero of motorcycle yeah. racing. He contributed a lot, a lot for the growth of motorcycle racing in the old world. Because um, of his personality, of uh, the, his uh, communication skill, uh, his ability to to let the people j- joy and uh, and be happy uh, watching races. I think that the, in my case, the the the, the one of the biggest uh, hero of uh, of my of my life. Is him, and I would uh, add uh, definitely Mark Markets. Who? Mark Markets is uh, is the eight-time world champion and still racing uh, in Honda with Honda Factory Racing, and uh, he's uh, is uh, is really a special uh, special rider. Fair. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for spending time and sharing insights with us about how the biking culture and the industry works. Thank you so much. I had a great time with you all. Thank you. Thank you for your supporting for us. Thank you. Pleasures are mine. Thank you so much for watching this till the end. I hope you liked this show. Please let us know. Would you want to see more alternative career people and want to understand their industry and their profession in order to make it big in their lives? How can you monetize your passion? Is one of the things that I am really passionate about. If you are too, let us know in the comments. Until the next episode, keep figuring out and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and share it with at least one person.